So y'all really want to know what's going on. I've been quiet long enough. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Carcina. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Carcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. someone's house but you don't have an arrest warrant for them oh man that is just your bones chilling don't it let's get into this many of y'all probably are surprised that Leonard LB is pushed back into the background and Richard Schaefer is the new, according to Floyd Mayweather, the new CEO of Mayweather Promotions. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what's going on here, Sino? I don't get it. What's happening? Can you please explain this madness? It's madness, B. <laughs> well, let me inform you. First of all, Floyd Mayweather is a very emotional human being. He does things off impulse sometimes. And when he does things off impulse, it normally clouds a lot of the judgment and the things that's been going on. But he's a fighter. And if you if he feels slighted, if he feels disrespected in such a way, he's going to fight back. That's what he knows. But this has nothing to really do with that element of it. The way in the delivery and how things happen, yeah. But this is a little bit different. Now, we're going to get into that. Now, this goes back to Golden Boy Promotions, where Richard Schaefer was really the brains of the operation. Oscar De La Hoya was normally the fighter. Now, going back into that element of it, you're looking at something of, well, I would say a partnership was done, but this was more deeper than that. If you start to look at who the person really is and where did he come from, that would kind of open the door to a, like a Pandora, you know, a Pandora's box, in other words, as to who they are, where they come from, and how they even got to be. How did this guy get attached to Oscar De La Hoya? How did this guy even come into, where did he come from? Who is this Richard Schaefer guy? Now, Oscar's main guy was Eric Gomez, who he grew up with. That's who he grew up with. So where did this Richard Schaefer guy come from? This was oh yeah. This was a situation that started a long time ago, people. And when you start to look into the details of how scary it is, you go, wow, this is nuts. Now, he's a Swiss banker by trade, went to a Swiss banking school, financial institute. So and right away, this tells me this is a crook. Swiss bankers are one of the biggest, some of the biggest crooks you ever know in your life. 
their whole existence is learning how the financial system works and how they can hide money from people. Yep. Oh, yeah. So the thing is, this guy whose wife, Lilia, is actually connected to Oscar De La Hoya. You know, and it wasn't by chance. And this is, <laughs> this guy left the whole boxing, I mean, the whole banking world to go work with Oscar De La Hoya. Because Oscar De La Hoya at that time was the biggest boxing box office star in the sport. He generated a lot of money for people. So Schaefer's like, I'll work on the business part. You work on the managing the fighters and, and all of that, you just focus on fighting and just show up for promotional events. Now, Golden Boy Promotions was having some success. But Things start to take a turn. And when they start to take a turn, they they normally go and branch into different things. Banks normally merge with other banks. You know, and become a bigger bank. Corporations merge into other corporations and become a merging corporation. He comes from that world. So for him, it made sense to merge with Mayweather Promotions and Golden Boy Promotions. You see, Mayweather Promotions was just getting off the ground and it wasn't even a real company like at first. Like there was, they weren't even structured to run their own pay-per-views. They weren't built for that. So the whole merging of the deal was really, we got Floyd Mayweather with us. Now all of the big Mayweather fights that we have are going to be basically Golden Boy Mayweather pay-per-views. Like, this is it. So all of these Golden Boy promotions of right along with Mayweather, this was good for business. Oscar provide his fighters on the platform to fight Floyd, which gives them the exposure. It builds them up. They're not gonna beat Floyd. But this is where Richard Schaefer comes into play even bigger. Because Al Heyman, who was the mastermind and the brains behind Floyd Mayweather's operation and Richard Schaefer form a bond. And those two bonds, that is formed, led to a union of an understanding. Al was telling him and helping him with how the structure of the boxing business is going and the way it was forged and being, you know, managed. Oscars down the stretch was torpedoing the success with all of his accusations. This guy's out here with Russian models, dressing up in, in drag. And that's bringing the company down. And you can't have your CEO in the face of your company, the president of the company, in a damn tutu and fishnet stockings. Going out here, getting coked out, doing whatever it is that he wants to do and putting the company in peril. You can't have it. So it was always understandable for us to understand why Richard Schaefer and Al Heyman came up with this masterful plan to get away from Oscar De La Hoya. 
Richard Schaefer was basically always supposed to be the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. That was always in design. Leonard Ellaby is one of the nicest human beings you ever meet. Very neat, very professional, and he was normally the manager for Floyd Mayweather. He took over managing him, but he really wasn't too much managing a lot of things for Floyd Mayweather. His managing was not from a business aspect. He was more of an arranger than a manager, for especially for business. Al Heyman, who was the advisor, really was the manager of, Al, of Floyd Mayweather. He made the business decisions. That wasn't Leonard's strong suit. Now, Leonard Ellaby used to basically sleep on the couch at Jeff Mayweather's house, you know. Jeff Mayweather brought Leonard Ellaby in. He was a strength and conditioning coach. And he started training Floyd with strength and conditioning. But Jeff Mayweather brought him on. And then him and Floyd became inseparable. And Jeff Mayweather was the manager for Floyd. Then it was like, well, Jeff was stealing money. That's what somebody would say. Oh, Jeff stole some money. So then Leonard took that position. So it's it's a, it's a lot of red tape going on out there and a lot of things that people didn't know that was in the dark. And these situations have come you know, to the forefront now because of this. Uh, but Richard Schaefer was doing something that they called, you know, unethical. And when Oscar decided to find out, because Oscar was back in rehab, as he was back getting, you know, going through what he was going through, and he missed Canelo's fight because... He's out with girls and, and a lot of blow, and it's more photographs. You know, and this is going to cost the company. So De La Hoya saw what was happening with Richard Schaefer and said, this guy's trying to steal my company from me. My company's going away. Like it's dying. All of his contracts with the Al Heyman fighters was not being renewed. They weren't being re-signed. And some of the fighters that were in the biggest fights in the world fighting, you know, Floyd Mayweather, like uh, Guerrero and, you know, Victor Ortiz, a lot of these guys who fought Mayweather, their contracts weren't being renegotiated for them to be, you know, put back into longer term contracts. Now you got to negotiate with them per fight. And it doesn't make any sense. This is not working for the company. Why would the president of the CEO and the guy who's doing the business do business this way? It's not making any type of sense. So De La Hoya started to figure out something was wrong because he's seen that he comes back and seeing that his company is going away. So what it seemed like what Richard Schaefer was doing was selling the farm and selling it all over to Mayweather Promotions, leaving the door open for them. And he's going to just jump off that boat and go over to Mayweather's boat. This is back in 2014, y'all. We ain't even talking about today. See, to know the truth of what's going on, you got to go all the way back 10 years. This is a thing that was happening 10 years ago. Now, 
Oscar De La Hoya sued Richard Schaefer for $50 million. So they went to arbitration so that all the stuff would in arbitration would be private. No one would know what's going on. So people always going to find out what's going on. So a part of this deal in this $50 million lawsuit, De La Hoya cut ties with all of his top fighters he had been promoting because he had no choice. They weren't under contract. So everybody who was being managed or advised by Al Heyman were gone. Richard Schaefer resigned in June and was allowed to resign after a decade of being the CEO of the company. But now this breach of fiduciary uh, duty to the company and what him and Richard was fighting over. And in the court, he had to pretty much explain why, you know, many of the promotional contracts that he had with Golden Boy and he had with Heyman, Heyman's fighters expired and were not renewed. Why would you leave Golden Boy promotions in such a vulnerable position? Now, had Canelo left at that time, it would have really doomed the company. And he was at a point where he could have possibly left, but he was still under contract. So the central issue is that under Richard Schaefer, many of the promotional contracts that Golden Boy had with all these Al Heyman fighters had went up and expired, didn't renew, left the company there to be weakened, and all these high-profile cards without having nearly as much say-so over the opponents, the financial details, had they been having these type of contracts, Richard Schaefer and Golden Boy came to an agreement and claimed that under an employee, employee employment contract, you know, uh, through March of 2018, he was barred from promoting for an unspecific, you know, unspecified length of time. You know, he couldn't even do it. It was like a one or two year ban from the sport of boxing was part of the agreement for his doings. Let that sink in. If you want to go into low down, check that out. Now, what did Richard Schaefer do after that? He went and created something called Ring Star when he first came back. And nobody knew why. Everybody's like, what is this? Ring Star? So he created Ring Star, and it didn't go anywhere. And he teamed up with David Hay. For Hayes promotional thing that didn't work. So all the stuff he was doing wasn't working out. And it was only to, you know, go through the length of time until he could get back to the, where he was supposed to. Now, Richard Schaefer was working in secret with Al Heyman allegedly behind the scenes, helping them with certain situations with finances on fights. How do fans see the, you know, fans see the situation? And Richard Schaefer and Floyd, you know, were tight through the entire thing. And Richard Schaefer loved Floyd Mayweather. De La Hoya was rooting for Floyd to lose. Schaefer was not. He knew Floyd Mayweather was the money and the generator of the, the energy of the money. So he's thinking of it from a financial standpoint. 
So when Floyd almost lost to Shane Mosley, you can look in the crowd and you'll see Richard Schaefer's reaction and you see Oscar De La Hoya's reaction. Oscar's fired up. Schaefer's pissed. And Shane works for their company. That told me all I needed to know. Now, here's what other people don't understand. And I mean, from a, a small standpoint, When this development was happening, Leonard Ellaby came in, did all the talking. Um, Sam came in and helped out. It was an advisor for Al Heyman, who does not come out and speak. So Sam, his, 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 his two boys, Brandon and Marcus, and those guys came out and they do their job. And the whole Watson clan was helping out. They've been helping Al out for years and had pretty great lives. Now, going through this uh, situation here, We're going to go to or go through a lot of different scenarios. And when we went through these scenarios, they were quite reflective. Leonard Ellerby became more and more the talker and put in place as the CEO because they needed someone to be there. And he did a great job of being that. But you ask any fighter, have they ever sat down and had a negotiation? Anybody that fought for Mayweather Promotions, where Leonard Ellerby was the guy handling the contracts and, and doing it? No. Leonard is the guy that was in the corner for Floyd. Okay? He was one of the guys in the corner before they told him, just, hey, you sit over there. He used to be in his corner. He was a strength and conditioning coach. Okay, Floyd's manager. But when Al came there, his job became mostly Al's extension. Richard Schaefer is a Swiss banker. He knows how to put money in places and how to move money. So Floyd loves a guy like that. He's going to remember a guy like Richard Schaefer. So he knows what Richard Schaefer could bring to the table more than what Leonard can bring to the table. Now, Moving on to what's been happening fast forward and over the years, Mayweather Promotions um, went on for another four years without Richard Schaefer, and that was fine because Floyd was getting ready to retire soon, so he really didn't need to have Richard Schaefer there. The main problem started to arise or where you could say their heads started to pop up once they started to see things go in a different light. And when things started to turn into a different light, that's when the occasions said, well, wait a minute, we got to talk about this. This don't seem right. So we got to definitely chat about this. And that's when the situation turned into a... Um, matter of disrespect. Gervonta Tank Davis put himself on the map to be the face of Mayweather Promotions and the only one to really have this much sustained success. And Floyd likes to tell a lot of fighters, whether you Floyd Mayweather or PBC or Mayweather Promotions, it's all Mayweather Promotions or Floyd Mayweather is always going to get a piece of all of it. 
So fighters be like, yeah, you ain't signed to me. I'm with PBC. I ain't with Mayweather Promotions. And laughing about it, Floyd is still getting paid. And that's what he's trying to allude to you guys is that you guys got to pay me anyway. (laughs) Al Heyman and me are connected. So I'm getting paid. If you're with Al, I'm getting a check of all you fighters. And you don't even know it. So when it was all said and done, and laid out in front of everybody for the world to see, those scales changed. And when it changed, it didn't change for the better. As Tank grew, his arrogance grew, and his confidence level grew, and Floyd put an arm around him and said, hey, you're going to be that guy. He became more out of control, more disrespectful, had troubles outside of the ring. Then he starts to insult and blame Floyd for it. So if this guy, Richard Schaefer, went and dated one of Oscar De La Hoya's cousins to get close to Oscar De La Hoya, that shows you what kind of a man the Swiss banker is and what he would do to get into position. Now, as he got mad disrespectful, Ryan Garcia put out the fact that Tank Davis had slept with Floyd Mayweather's daughter. And that led to them having a disagreement and a distance between each other. Even though they're grown, Somehow, Floyd Mayweather was to blame. Now, when we look at the situation again, as it rears its head one more time, everybody seemed to pivot and change their directions as they want to all blame Floyd Mayweather. Now, as Floyd Mayweather was doing his thing, and taking care of business and doing whatever. Tank Davis kept taking shots at him. So when Floyd say something back, Tank don't know how to receive construct. to a situation, you know, represents or represents, presents themselves to where he has to be the guy. And now he's like, oh, I'm not with Mayweather Promotions no more. I'm just PBC. Floyd's still getting paid off you. So then a disrespectful remark was put out about his daughter. And once that remark was put out about his daughter, things took another turn and it kind of went left. Uh, I keep seeing these boxing guys make stuff up because they don't really know things, Um, but it's quite disrespectful when you see Floyd Mayweather um, having to read tweets talking about your girl is begging for the D and it got deleted, I guess, off social media, but to put that out was exclusively, you know, disrespectful. You know, I don't know how real the tweet was because I didn't see it when it was originally posted. I just seen somebody say, hey, this is what Tank put out there. And when he put that out there, this is it. And 
after all of this going on, I think he knew that they were bringing Richard Schaefer in and they were going to keep Leonard Ellaby on in a, another role. He was going back. He's still going to be doing what he do, go out and do the speaking at the podium. Richard Schaefer wasn't going to be doing all of that. He was just going to handle the business part and the portions of the company. So Floyd Mayweather put out a statement just saying, hey, you want to go over there and work with Tank? That's fine. So Floyd put out a statement saying Mayweather promotions would like to extend our deepest uh, gratitude to Leonard Ellaby for his exceptional leadership and unwavering dedication over the years. Leonard has been an integral part of the team, contributing to numerous business endeavors and have played a pivotal role in the success of Mayweather Promotions. After years of hard work and dedication, Leonard has made the heartfelt decision to step down as CEO, to spend more time with his family and loved ones. We have the most utmost respect for his decision and his incredible gratefulness for his leadership. He helped shape Mayweather Promotion into a thriving organization it is today. So he took the high road. You know, and then he announced Richard Schaefer would be the CEO moving forward for Mayweather Promotions. Well, when you model yourself after certain things, you want to make sure that you have a team and a team that's working for you. Richard Schaefer's job to sell a fight, he can't do it. I mean, Leonard Ellerby probably just found out while he was in the middle. I mean, the timing of it by Floyd was vindictious. It was very vicious. And it was sending a message that you're standing there next to Tank when he's talking crazy about me and saying that disrespectful stuff about my daughter. Okay. Well, we're going to say thank you for your gratitude and your and the fact that you want to sit back with your family and start your new chapter in your life. <laughs> I mean, Leonard seemed caught off guard by it. So now Richard Schaefer is going out to, uh, well, we'll be partnering with him, and he's the financial expert and phenomenal founder. Uh, in the world of boxing, over 40 years of experience combined, together we are going to expand our presence by establishing, establishing Mayweather headquarters in Los Angeles. Our goal is to elevate Mayweather promotions to a global success, supporting fighters worldwide and assisting them in making rewarding business decisions that will benefit them well beyond their boxing careers. We look forward to a new chapter and the continued global success of Mayweather Promotions. Mm -mm -mm. So now Richard Schaefer is back where he was supposed to be all along. Leonard was never supposed to be the CEO. And he was okay with that. They just put him in there as a title basis. Leonard didn't ha handle any contract negotiations. He didn't handle any CEO work at Mayweather Promotions. Great individual, great human being. Um, his wife is a very um, nice woman, very kind. You know, he's the cleanest person I've ever seen. No matter what, L going to be clean, organized, trimmed up. 
he finally decided to go all full gray and go Santa Claus on everybody. But before he used to have that that mustache and beard all lined up. He was fighting the gray. But he's always clean. Suit pressed, everything. Leonard Ellaby knew how to be clean. So that's what's going on, people. That's the whole situation right now. Richard Schaefer's back. I don't see Leonard Ellaby really leaving. You know, he just will be working basically PBC and still doing what he's doing. You just probably won't be seeing him around Floyd that much. And if they, and then this stuff is not permanent with Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Like this stuff ain't permanent with him. Florida say this, and then tomorrow call him up and be like, my bad. Nah, you still here. It's cool. You just keep doing what you do. <laughs> so it, it don't make a difference. That stuff come and go. So that's the truth behind everything that's going on. So now you know. And be prepared, and let's get ready for the fight tonight. Um, who you guys are taking, you can tell me in the comment section. Because I did a prediction video. Most of you guys didn't see it. But it's out there. So um, we might do a post-fight video and go from there. But other than that, I gotta, I'm got i watering my grass like an old man. Let me go ahead and do that. Shouts out to Kwame Brown Bus Life, Ticket TV, uh, the Dreamers Pro, doing his thing out there. Um Guys that's doing a good job in boxing, you know, it's a lot of you out there. It's a lot of you who are not because they're not really boxing guys at all. They just put fight in their title and just screw it all up. And, um, you know, Fight Hub doing their thing. Boxing and basketball, that's us. We always going to do our thing. Uh, you got Fight Hype, those guys out there doing their thing. You know, it's a lot of people out there that's um, doing something that a lot of people don't know about in the game. But this is that real spill. I've always known, you know, it's always been something that we have spoken on um, constantly with people not really getting the gist of what we're talking about sometimes. We had firsthand knowledge to a lot of things going on within the camp from being around it and seeing and knowing how certain people are. Like, we know how Floyd is as a person and everything. So I was, you know, we were all there when Floyd was getting cut a check by Al Heyman himself, you know. We've seen that happen. We've seen um, a lot of things go down in the sport of boxing that people don't understand and don't seem to get. You see? Al Heyman cutting Floyd his check and giving Floyd Mayweather his check. Now, we knew way back in the day what this was. You know, you, we know that this is a situation where Al is the brains behind it. A multi, multi-millionaire. Money means really nothing to him. He's been, he's a Harvard graduate. He's been getting it for years. Um, and we're talking about for the past 30, 40 years remaining a multimillionaire. Like we talking hundreds of millions. And he'll you'll walk past him and you wouldn't even know him. 
But Al Heyman is an astute businessman. And doing what he's doing, this has been key his entire life. So, with that being said, uh, welcome to HDI TV, Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Follow those channels. Armando Black TV, follow him. The Star Report, follow the Star Report with Star, probably kicking up some dust right now. And that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy Carcino is out. Enjoy the fights. Hehehehe. <laughs>